In this video, we're going to take a look at the generalized Hooke's Law for multiaxial loading. Let's begin by reviewing the Hooke's Law for uniaxial case. So when we have a uniaxial load in just one direction, we know that Hooke's Law is that stress is equal to the Young's modulus times the strain. And so if we have a part and we apply a load in this direction, then the uh, piece will elongate like this. And so we end up with an axial strain. It also is the case, though, that, that this has gotten narrower, right? So we also have some deformation in the other direction, and we call this the transverse strain. And this transverse strain is related to the axial strain through the Poisson's ratio. And we could put the subscript axial, although if we don't put it on there, then it's assumed that that's the axial strain. So this is the uniaxial Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law also applies, actually, when the component is loaded in shear. So if we have shear loading, then we can write, essentially, Hooke's Law for shear, where tau is the shear stress, g is the shear modulus, and gamma is the shear strain. So this is a very similar relationship. But now we want to look at the Hooke's Law in the case where we have a multi-axial stress, so not only in, in one direction, but in either two or three directions. So in order to find the total strain in multi-axial loading, right, so we want to find the strain in any direction, and we are going to do this by applying the principle of superposition. Let's assume that we start by applying a sigma 1, stress in the one direction. So if we apply sigma 1, then we would find that the strain in the one direction is sigma 1 divided by E. The strain in the two direction is negative Poisson's ratio times strain 1, which we can replace with this. And strain 3 is the same as strain 2. Now, I want to point out here, I'm saying that we're applying sigma 1. This is another way of saying sigma 1, 1 if we're really using the full tensor notation, or that strain is epsilon 1, 1, or epsilon 2, 2, or epsilon 3, 3, just so that we're clear here about what these symbols mean. So these are the strains that result from sigma 1 or sigma 1, 1. Now, if we also had sigma 2 or sigma 3 present, then we would repeat that same approach for each of those. So let's just assume that we also have sigma uh, 2 and make sure that we understand how to write those equations. So if we apply sigma 2, then we get the following. And we could write the same for sigma 3. So now what we do is we go through and we add up, for example, the epsilon 1 terms for all of the stresses. So we're going to sum over all of the stresses, the sigma epsilon 1s. Then we're going to do the same for the epsilon 2s and the same for the epsilon 3s. So let's take a look at what those equations are in the end.
So after we have summed over all of the different stresses, we end up with the following expression for epsilon 1. So it's 1 over e, which is the Young's modulus, times sigma 1, and then minus nu, the Poisson's ratio, times the sum of the stresses that are in the other direction. And a similar equation for epsilon 2. And finally for epsilon 3. So I think the one thing that's important to note is that the first term that's here, this is the response to the normal stress. And I guess really this is the normal stress that's parallel to that direction, right? Because these are also, they're normal stresses, but they're acting transverse to that direction. So these are also normal stresses. They're not shear stresses. So these are the ones that would tend to cause a contraction. So these three equations here taken together are the generalized Hooke's law for multiaxial loading.